Kate Diadamo, uh, Senator Wyden uh, mentioned uh, sex workers and uh, you are a political organizer at, a, at an organization called Hacking Hustling, which protects the rights and promotes rights for sex workers. Uh, so welcome, uh, thank you for having us on, uh, being here with us online today. Um, the bill's authors say that the Earn Act is supposed to stop check, child sexual e exploitation, um, but we've heard here that it may actually increase exploitation and it's not going to protect vulnerable people like sex workers. Can you please tell me, uh, are sex workers going to be put at risk uh, by the Earn Act? I've heard about SESTA-FOSTA. How did that impact sex workers? Uh, so who's going to be hurt by, by the Earn Act and how is the Earn Act going to hurt these people? Sure. Um, and, you know, I know I, a lot of people think, you know, when, when we lose encryption, you know, I am a law abiding citizen. I, I uh, don't do anything that the government should be bothered by and therefore I'll be fine. And I guess I'm kind of here as uh, a representative of some of those criminals who are going to get kicked off the of platforms. Um, and so when we say that this is going to disproportionately impact sex workers, it's not a guess. It's literally just an extension of a pattern that's been happening, yes, since Esther Foster, but actually for years. And so when we're talking about sex workers and the impact of being kicked off platforms, let's remember that we're overwhelmingly talking about women and femmes of color, LGBTQ folks, caregivers, parents, people with disabilities, um, people existing in poverty who are trying to make it under difficult circumstances. And that's who loses access to these platforms. And that's because, you know, what happens is when you lose encryption, but more broadly, when you expand the liability of platforms, and this is essentially what this is doing, it's expanding the liability of platforms for hosting specific content. And it's not just liability under um, child pornography laws. Under sesta Foster, it actually expanded criminal liability for just any association with commercial sex. And so you're looking at actually a host of different forms of liability that platforms are going to have to be navigating. And the collateral consequence of that is that sex workers are going to lose access to those platforms because it's just too high of a liability to keep those people on, knowing that you're opening yourself up to a host of both criminal and civil charges by associating with the sex industry. And so after SESTA FOSTA, which is what that did, very broadly expanded both criminal and civil liability. Um, as folks have mentioned, you know, platforms shut down, but also we saw um, a people being just kicked off, losing their accounts, losing access to things that a lot of other people enjoy. And what that meant is a decrease in safety and in health for sex workers. And you don't actually have to support the sex industry to understand that we shouldn't be putting people at higher risk for violence um, and economic instability. And so SESTA FOSTA passed, and I've been an organizer for sex workers for um, over a decade at this point, and the impact was immediate. And we have a lot of anecdotal data from community about what happened when people were kicked off those platforms. And it was immediately people went into street-based work. Um, people started uh, not being able to connect with clients, not being able to negotiate with clients for fear that that communication was going to get them flagged. And to enact harm reduction, to enact safety, you have to have multiple options, which means you have to have access to clients, you have to be able to control your circumstances, and you have to be able to negotiate freely. And when you increase liability, all of those things are going to be compromised. And so the impact of Earn It is that it's going to create a commission to expand this liability, and it's going to flag things that are going to disproportionately impact sex workers. And it's going to dis disproportionately cut off all forms of harm reduction that sex workers use to stay safe. And we did see increases in violence. We did see economic instability. We did see housing instability. And you know, it doesn't actually accomplish what it set out to do. And it actually is a bit of an insult, honestly, to people who experience violence to say that what we're gonna do is not invest in prevention because we do have child abuse prevention programs that are severely underfunded. We have domestic violence programs that are geared towards prevention that are literally, these bills are sitting in Congress right now with the same funding levels that they had about 10 years ago. And they're not being reauthorized. Those are not, those amounts are not being increased and they're not even being brought to scale. And so instead of investing in prevention, instead of preventing violence, what we're doing is we're having a bill, we're, we're instead expanding liability for companies to just ignore it and push it under the rug. And honestly, as someone who comes from an anti-violence background, it's an insult. 
it's an insult to say that we're not, we, we are going to be complicit, honestly, in that violence by doing something that we know is actually gonna ignore it. Because what happened after sesta Fossa was not just that there was increases in all of this for sex workers, there were decreases in referrals to victim service programs. So even last year, there was a decrease in the number of trafficking victims served. Um, there's been a decrease in uh, prosecutions and I, I'm, a, a non-carceral person. So um, prosecutions, I don't think are a good metric, but even by their metrics, they're failing and it's gotten worse. And so instead of actually dealing with these problems, which we could do, we literally have the bills written. And we even have not just bills about prevention of, of child abuse, prevention of intimate partner violence, permit, prevention of domestic violence. There is also a bill which says we need to take stock and do research. It's called the Safe Sex Worker Study Act. It literally just says we should survey the land of what happened after sex workers lost access to understand the impact that it had on violence, on exploitation, on trafficking, and not a single person who has co-sponsored the Earn It Act is co-sponsoring that bill. And so it's pretty clear what, uh, what the priorities are, and none of them are actually about addressing violence at its root cause, which we could do, which we could very easily do. Um, and instead, it's taking this run around to try to say, well, if this happens to you, maybe you could sue. That, uh, that sounds very compelling. I know, I know uh, at the beginning you mentioned that you are representing uh, the criminals, but uh, my understanding too is a lot of sex work, particularly in this moment, is there's nothing illegal about it. I personally know people and I've heard many more stories from uh, mostly women, but, but lots of people um, altogether who have lost their jobs. They're struggling to make ends meet because of the pandemic and the shutdown. And they've turned to uh, digital sex work, OnlyFans accounts, uh, other things like that, uh, that are completely legal. But those sorts of activities that are helping people survive right now, sounds like would also be put at risk and they'd be criminalized uh, under, um, under the Earned Act. Is that correct? It is, and I mostly work with sex workers who uh, engage in a wide range of things. And honestly, consensually trading sex for money and engaging in, in consensual services shouldn't be criminalized in the first place. So that line of, of criminalization, I think, is absolutely um, for a different panel. Um, <laughs> but I, I am never going to throw um, my, my community and my folks under the bus. Oh, of course, of course. Um, I, I think it just it, it affects a broad number of people, and uh, and and I agree that we need uh, to champion the rights of everybody who, of all adults who are uh, you know engaging in consensual activities. And this will uh, this will reduce our ability to do that. And it sounds like pushing some uh, a lot of the illegal activity under the rug doesn't just ignore violence, but actually kind of promotes and enables that violence as well. So uh, let's bring it out in the open. Let's get people the help they need. Let's uh, let's promote health and safety for everybody. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, no matter how you feel about the sex industry, no matter how you feel about criminalization of the sex industry, we shouldn't be doing things that make it more violent. 